All right, I've been wanting to make this video for a while. For anybody that's been following my stream career, you might be curious as to why I basically stopped streaming. Because this year, 2021, I've pulled back the stream schedule basically completely for good reason. Health, you know, mental and physical and all that stuff. So I figured I'd make a video and talk about that process and kind of give some uh, clarity from how I started, where things went wrong, and uh, why I'm here today making this video, basically. <laughs> so let's talk about some backstory first. I got started with streaming in May of 2015. That was with the House of Wolves uh, expansion for Destiny 1. Very exciting time to, to start streaming. And that was on the Planet Destiny channel as well. So a little throwback to that. I actually started streaming on my personal channel, twitch.tv forward slash Tefty Teft in October of 2015. And then a month later, I was partnered. So I got partnered very quick and that was uh, November 20th around November 20th of 2015, which speaking of November 20th of 2021 will be six years partnered on Twitch at 72 months, 72 sub months right there. So I have had the privilege of calling myself a full-time streamer from like 2016 to 2020, which, uh, which is amazing. Honestly, I'm very thankful for that, that time. So why on earth would I give up such a cool gig? It hundred percent comes down to mental health and physical health. Both of those. Both of those were declining from the constant grind of Twitch. Also, side note, I'm hoping this video could potentially help future streamers or people interested in going full-time or stuff like that. If you could see where I have went wrong on things, then that could help potentially course correct some things for you. So in 2016, I found myself in a position where the more I put into streaming, the more I got out of it. I was with Planet Destiny for about a year or two at that point and I had a bit of community stock, community awareness of my brand as Tefty Teft. That kind of provided momentum for me to start a streaming career, which then stacked itself into the more I put into it, the more I was getting back. I was growing, lots of followers were coming in, I was getting subs, and basically I was able to suddenly support myself fully from streaming rather quickly just off of, uh, just off the growth from basically Destiny. So with the positive reinforcement of growth on Twitch, this led to some unhealthy habits for my streaming. I was streaming 10, around 10 to 12 hours a day on average, and I wasn't taking any breaks. There was no weekends off. It was basically seven days a week, 10 to 20, uh, 10 to 12 hours, and sometimes longer. You know, maybe some days I might've done like an eight hour stream or something like that. In fact, I would consider eight hours like, oh, it's a short stream, even memes. My wife should be like, oh, getting off early, huh? <laughs> Which is kind of insane, right? So. Uh, 10, 12 hours on average every day for seven days a week uh, from like 2016 to around mid 2019. And the only time I really took off was for conventions. You know, if we, we were going to Guardian Con or Destiny Con at the time, I would consider that time off, even though it wasn't really time off because it was technically business or, you know, stream business involved type of stuff. My birthday, other people's birthdays, friends, get togethers, events, things going on, uh, shows and all that, family dinners, you know, all that stuff, I basically streamed through. I said, I'm sorry, I can't, I have to stream because I was technically building a business. That saying right there, like, sorry, I'm building a business, I can't come do whatever thing that you're thinking about. <laughs> it's kind of, it's dangerous because it gives you the license and ability to say, I'm not going to do these things that are good for your mental, your psyche, your, you know, your mental health and uh, allow you to just keep on grinding, 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 grinding. And I mean, it works. So you might think like, why did I not take any time off? Also, like that's a valid question to think. It's difficult when you're in the middle of that growth and seeing it happen, it's very difficult to step back and say, oh, I need to take time off for to recover. Uh, instead, I was looking at the, the numbers, the metrics, you know, when you start getting absorbed by data that's happening in something that you're building, it gets very exciting and it becomes addicting. Addicting in a bad way, honestly, because that addiction allowed me to justify uh, constantly taking away from my mental health and physical health. You know, I was like, it's okay because this is getting bigger or stronger or whatever. So yeah, it was definitely my own fault that I would, that I did that. Going full time as a streamer, my finances were connected to that. So the more time I put into it, again, easy to justify spending all that time streaming because it was for my financial well-being. <laughs> so in terms of building a business, obviously people put in insane hours and time 
for from like a, a ground point ground like a from a startup point that's what i'm trying to say so from a startup point of view like you obviously put in a lot of time the difference with streaming though is that you are as the content creator the product and you can't hire someone to come in and stream for you essentially over the weekends or something like that in order to make up time for whatever time might be lost from um, from the stream career or the, the quote unquote business, you know? So that, that's where like it gets really tricky from looking at it purely as, oh, it's just a business perspective. Treat it like that because you are the product and therefore it becomes very difficult to separate that. And so you it's easy to convince yourself to say, well, I'm going to stream every day and just not take breaks ever. Just trying to give a perspective as to why these choices are made for a lot of people who get into streaming. I see it all the time on Twitter, people talking about it. I'm like, oh yeah, I recognize that, recognize that. Yep, I know that feeling. I know that emotion, yeah. So I have a couple tips for uh, for streamers, budding streamers, people who wanna become full-time streamers and all that. Tip number one for people looking to make streaming a full-time career, diversify your income. Do not rely on one source like subs from Twitch streaming. That sounds obvious, right? It's, it's like, yeah, no, no kidding. You should have multiple streams of income. But when you get into a place where you're growing and success is happening in a stream setup, it is very easy to be like, well, I'm just gonna put all my eggs into that basket and, uh, and try to ride it to the moon. This causes issues. It, for one, your finances are directly connected to streaming, like I already mentioned, and that easily justifies your ability to never take time off, which is going to ruin you at some point. You have to take time off, no matter what it is, even if it's your most favorite thing ever, you have to take time away from it in order to have a healthy balance in your brain so you don't eventually self-destruct at some point. So, diversify your income. Uh, number one, as a content creator, the most easy thing that you could possibly do is post on YouTube. And YouTube is a fantastic place to uh, not only get new people into your stream, but also have another income stream, another income source right there. Because ad revenue on YouTube is significantly better than ad revenue on Twitch. Mostly because you usually get more views on YouTube if you are like feeding the algorithm, uh, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. You know, there's, there's good sides to that and there's bad sides to that. But if you're giving quality content that the algorithm says, oh yeah, this is content that people will actually be interested in here. Let me send it to those people that are interested in it in, in that content and then they get value out of it. Then that's a good reason for the algorithm to work right there for YouTube. So for me, one of my biggest downfalls in my career is that I basically dropped YouTube out of the rotation completely. Again, I was like, I'm focusing 100% on Twitch and the YouTube channel suffered dramatically from it. You know, I went through phases of like, well, maybe I should just post VODs or something like that. And they don't really work on YouTube. YouTube is curated content, kind of like this. This is technically a curated video because I'm, um, I'm making specific points. So don't ignore that. Do things on other platforms, diversify your income streams through other platforms and make that a priority. If you're going to make this a full-time thing, you need to make that a priority. It's very important. Uh, one thing that I didn't do was utilize merchandise as much as I should have. I just dabbled in it here and there. I was like, here's a shirt a year later. Yeah, I got a shirt, you know, another year later, maybe another thing or something like that. And that's just not the way to do it. You should have a regular set of merchandise coming through. Assuming you have a fan base, you should have a regular set of that stuff coming through to potentially tap into uh, along with other diversification of income stuff. This video isn't specifically about making multiple income streams from content creation, so I'm not gonna go into the whole things, but you can definitely do a search for those those type of things and get like a really great list of things that you can immediately put into practice from day one of how you want to create a business from content creation. One thing that I also did was I cut off gigs from past uh, skills. I'm a musician and I was producing and mixing um, records for people. And once I got into streaming, I was like, I'm not doing that anymore. I basically cut off those connections. And well, I mean, not cut them off, but you know what I mean? I basically said, I'm not taking on any more projects. And uh, that was that was stupid. I should have like kept on with taking projects and just diversified my time. Would the Twitch side have grown this fast? No, I'd be in a better mental state overall. And to be fair, like the reason why I decided to cut off those gigs, those 
those other opportunities that I had was because I was dead tired after streaming 10 to 12 hours a day. I had no more gas left in me, and I de definitely did not want to stare at a computer screen anymore doing other gigs. That exhaustion of streaming so much ultimately led to physical health problems as well. After years of non-stop grind, my health caught up on me, my physical health. It started happening in 2019. I just, I realized that I was feeling off. I just woke up and I was like, you know, I just don't feel good. My body feels different. And I was like, I'm just getting older. That's what it is. I'm in my mid thirties somewhere at that point, And uh, I was noticing that my body didn't feel good anymore from where it had in the past. What's strange about streaming is it, it makes you ignore these things. I knew I should be getting up and stretching and going to the bathroom and all that every hour. That's an obvious thing. Everybody knows that you're supposed to take care of yourself that way, right? Well, with streaming, it is easy to forget when you are engrossed in a game and also feeling good over the interaction with Twitch chat. So this is, it creates this thing where time flies by. Two to three hours would go by and I had not gotten up. I would just sail right through it and be like, oh man, I gotta get up, I gotta use the bathroom, I gotta get a snack or something. This wasn't a, oh, this is this would happen every now and then. This was a daily occurrence that I would end up only getting up maybe three times during those 10 to 12 hour periods, which is super unhealthy. And again, I should not have done that. This is totally on me, but it was very easy to slip into this mindset of I'm going to just keep going because I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying this chats enjoying this. There was another side of it too. Um, when you get up to you to take a break, use the bathroom, whatever, uh, your viewership naturally drops and for good reason. Like people are there for entertainment. They're not there to watch a screen with nothing happening while someone goes and uses the bathroom for five minutes, or whatever. So I get that it's for obvious reasons why viewership drops. But when you understand that as a streamer, there is like this underlining reluctance that kicks in that says, well, I don't really want to get up right now because like, you know, oh, I just got raided or uh, my viewership's high right now. And, like I should, I should roll with it. Just give it another 30 minutes before I get up or take a break or something like that. Again, super unhealthy. Just like, why would I do that to myself mentally? But yet I did, you know, like I'm not a dumb person. I'm relatively intelligent, so I can see why things are a certain way, but I still fell into these pit traps. So that mental association of not wanting to take a break, bad for my mental health and also bad physically as well. So tip number two for up and coming streamers, and this is a very obvious one, but I'm going to reiterate it for people. Do not ignore your health. You have to take care of yourself. It is very important if you are sick, and I mean sick, not like you got the sniffles. If you're super sick, you won't be able to stream. Do not ignore your health. Take regular breaks if you can. Figure out a way to make it so you definitely take a five minute break every hour that you stream. Get up, move, stretch. Outside of streaming, exercise is obviously very important. Going for a walk, hiking, lifting weights, any of that stuff is extremely important to combat the sedentary lifestyle that streaming naturally induces. And it's a little bit different from the common sedentary office work type of thing, because when you have Twitch chat going on and you're playing games that are like giving you endorphine injections and all that, uh, your body has these um, these reactions that are happening that normally aren't when you're sitting down. Like normally you're up and moving around when you're experiencing things like that. But instead, you know, you, you have this idea that people are watching. So it's creating this like excitement right there that you're you're on you're on stage essentially and then you're playing a game which also creates that rush of stuff and that's constantly happening for hours at a time on a day in day out you feel like you're constantly on so that creates like this this different experience of a sedentary lifestyle that's very contradictory to um uh to normally sitting at a desk so don't ignore your health i mean people have died from 24-hour streams before I'm not saying like if they did one 24 hour stream and they died or something like that, but there's people who have gotten into the habit of doing 24 hour streams consistently. And some of them have passed away from it because you get like blood clots and stuff. It's crazy. You can have a stroke from a blood clot because you weren't getting up. <laughs> so don't ignore this. For me personally, um, doing those bad habits led to an acceleration of heart disease. 
So I am now in the process of um, making myself healthier and trying to repair some of that damage that I caused, uh, which is another reason why I haven't been streaming because I got sick. So rolling back to 2019, um, in the middle of August of 2019, I believe, I took my first official long break. It was like two weeks. <laughs> two weeks after basically since 2015-ish, uh, just going nonstop. Uh, I took my first two week break. <laughs> Sounds insane, right? Although I did start taking one day off of like mm, a few months prior to that because I was already feeling burnt out. In fact, I was officially burnt out for sure. I just wasn't willing to admit it to myself that I was burnt out. Took my first break in August of 2019 and it was two weeks long and it was obviously well needed. It honestly should have been two months in retrospect. I, I should have taken at least two months off just straight. Um, but my finances were directly connected. My livelihood was directly connected to streaming. So there was no way in hell that I was going to agree to taking two months off. The thing that I found really interesting in a bad way, <laughs> not in a good way, was that my sub count never fully recovered from taking two weeks off. There's a saying among Twitch streamers or streamers in general that like a day off is like two weeks off, you know, or a week off or something like that, um, which is very true because like you have like a 24 hour window of interest that happens with people tuning into your stream and outside of that 24 hour window it's like you've you're already technically old news and it's a it's again it's a really unhealthy perspective to have an unhealthy way to look at it um or an unhealthy way to live i should say but it's the reality of live streaming i'm saying that this is legitimately the business of streaming is that people's attention spans are limited they have lives they have work they have a very set amount of time that they can actually tune in and be a part of a stream so that stock right there of them being able to tune in is very limited uh where was i going with this <laughs> i lost my train of thought <laughs> all right recovery so the reason why it's so hard to recover from taking time off on stream is because people's attention spans have moved on you know they've either they either stopped watching twitch or moved on to other streamers or different types of content that they're consuming. So if you're not on almost every day, then it's hard to uh, to capture new viewers in that sense, unless they're coming from other sources like YouTube or stuff like that. So it's just it's just part of the business. So yeah, after seeing like, I think it was mid 2020, I realized, man, I, my stream had not fully recovered sub count wise since I took that time off in uh, 2019. And that was a big realization for me. I was like, I am not going to recover from this unless I go back to really unhealthy levels of streaming, which is going to get me further sick. So yeah, by mid 2020, I had a realization that I was not going to be able to continue as a full time streamer because I was tired all the time. I was sicker. I was as sick as I've ever been. I just was not feeling good. Obviously, the pandemic and global politics were going on, so that didn't help. But I was just I had not recovered from the the burnout that I had en endured from the previous years and the stream hadn't financially recovered to where it was prior to that break in 2019 so i also began to realize how much damage i had done to my friendships family friendships uh, even my marriage you know like streaming is is tough because um it's just the amount of time that has been involved with saying no to birthday 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 you know social events sorry can't come uh family, dinners, all that stuff, basically getting ignored because I'm streaming. And memes, my wife, she's been amazing. Like she is 100% a, a rock that I could uh, lean on and she never budged whatsoever on that stuff. But it definitely affected her because there was a lot of times she felt lonely and isolated from the fact that I was like, I was in another room, but I wasn't there for 12 hours a day, you know? Yeah, relationship wise, you can uh, you can just you can lose a lot of friendships from being a streamer because you're just not there. Like if you aren't showing up and being a part of someone's life, eventually you are officially not a part of their life anymore. So that's why I haven't been streaming regularly since the start of 2020. Though I have rekindled my interest and enjoyment of producing YouTube videos again. Memes and I started posting on our music channel and getting serious about it too, which is really cool. 
Uh, recently passed 10,000 subscribers on there, so that's been steadily growing and it's in a completely different sector. It's not gaming, it's music technology. and It's been really cool to see that grow and also give me confidence that I can actually be a content creator regardless of, you know, destiny. <laughs> and back then for a while, I was pretty burnt out on YouTube and that was because of the grind that I had agreed to with Planet Destiny as well. So I kind of jumped from one death grind to another death grind, uh, which I guess that's a thing in my life that I need to get better at. I'm, I'm definitely really enjoying making YouTube videos again, and uh, I really appreciate that. In a future video, I am actually planning on making a more detailed guide on how I would start streaming today. So if you are interested in that type of stuff, then, uh, you know, stay tuned. Well. Thank you very much for watching. If you've been a part of my streams at any point in the past few years, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I really do appreciate all the support. It was an amazing ride and I will be streaming from time to time. You know, it's just, I'm not doing uh, regular scheduled streams for all the reasons I listed in this video that you guys are aware of now, but I, uh, I definitely want to make sure that you guys know that I have been incredibly blessed and I'm incredibly grateful for all the support that I got over the years uh, and actually continue to get support. It's insane, actually. So, yeah. So thank you, guys. Thank you very much. That's it. That's the video. I'll see you soon. Deuces.